Hi to you all and welcome to our online assembly for today. And it's Reverend Rich here. And I'm joined in this assembly by Reverend Claire, Reverend Phil and Doreen from our ministry team. It's good to be with you. Welcome to our assembly for today, where we're going to be thinking about a special season in the life of the church. But first of all, let's think about what you did before you started doing any schoolwork today or before you started to think about coming to watch this assembly online. I'm sure that most of us had to get up, first of all, get out of bed to get washed and dressed, to have our breakfast, to clean our teeth although some of you might still be in your PJs. All of that was helping us prepare for the day ahead. What preparations would you have to make for these events and activities that we mentioned? We'll come up with some answers and see if you can at home as well. So if you were going on holiday, what might you need to do to prepare? Book somewhere to stay. Buy tickets for travel. Make sure your things are packed. Make sure there's enough petrol in the car. I wonder what your answer would be to add to that list in preparing to go away to travel. Oh, we all long for a holiday at the moment. What about having a sleepover? I'm sure many of you are excited and looking forward to a sleepover when that can happen, either with family or with friends. What might you need to prepare for that? Sleeping bags. PJs. Make sure your room's tidy. Some sweets to take with you. What about preparing for a ballet exam? Ballet shoes. Ballet dress. The right music. Lots of practice. And what about playing in a football match? What might you need to do in order to prepare for that? Don't forget your shin pads. And your football boots. Get lots of practice in. Be a team player. So I wonder if you can come up with some answers yourself for some of those things, those activities, or you might want to think about some other activities or events that you can think about how you prepare for them. Phil. Today, we're thinking about a special season in the church year. It's called Lent, but before we have Lent, we have... Grove Tuesday, which is a Christian festival celebrated in many countries across the world. It falls on the Tuesday before the beginning of Lent, a period of around six weeks leading up to Easter. During Lent, Christians give up luxuries to remember when Jesus went into the desert for 40 days to pray and fast. The exact date of Shrove Tuesday changes from year to year, but one thing remains the same. It's always 47 days before Easter Sunday. And yes, you've guessed it, it's always on a Tuesday. The name comes from the old word shriving, which means to listen to someone's sins and forgive them. In Anglo-Saxon England, Christians would go to church on Shrove Tuesday to confess their sins and clean their soul. In other words, they would be shriven. Shrove Tuesday has another popular name, Pancake Day. Traditionally, during Lent, Christians would give up rich, tasty foods such as butter, eggs, sugar and fat, which some Christians continue to do. And Shrove Tuesday was the last chance to eat these things. So what better way to do so than to make a delicious pancake? Today, people whisk up these yummy treats on Shrove Tuesday and they add all kinds of tasty toppings such as fruit, honey, chocolate and ice cream. What is your favourite pancake topping? So Shrove Tuesday leads us into the season of Lent. When Christians remember a time of preparation that Jesus experienced. Let's watch this video to find out more. Come and see the temptation of Jesus. 
Jesus was baptized by John, and God showed John that Jesus was his chosen one. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness among the wild animals. Oh, hey there, friend. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus didn't eat anything. So he was hungry. Satan came to him and said, Hey, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus knew God's word, and so he answered, No. The Word of God says people don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so Jesus passed the first test. <laughs> then Satan took him to Jerusalem and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. Aww. For the Word of God says he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Wait. But Jesus said, the Word of God also says, you must not test the Lord your God. No. And so Jesus passed the second test. So Satan took him to the peak of a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. Satan said, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. But Jesus said, Get out of here, Satan, for the word of God says you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. <laughs> then Satan went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. And so Jesus passed the third and last test. For the first 30 years of his life, Jesus lived at home in Nazareth. At the age of 30, Jesus knew that he was about to start his public work. He was about to start teaching people about God and performing many amazing miracles. He knew that it wouldn't be easy and that eventually it would lead to his death. In preparation for this time, Jesus went off on his own into the desert. He spent 40 days and nights there and didn't eat or drink anything. During Jesus' time in the desert, he was tempted to do several things that he knew was wrong. However, he didn't give in to temptation and didn't do anything wrong. At the end of 40 days, Jesus left the desert and began the work that he had come to earth to do. His time in the desert prepared him for this. Lent is the period of time that leads up to Easter. It begins on Ash Wednesday, the day after Shrove Tuesday, which is when it's traditional to cook the pancakes. For Christians, Easter is the most important time of the year because that's when they remember Jesus's death and resurrection. We will be back with another assembly on the theme of Easter. Christians want to be prepared for the celebration of Easter, so they use Lent as a time to think more about God, go to special services for church and to pray. Lent lasts for 40 days and nights, but it doesn't include Sundays, which is the same length of time that Jesus spent in the desert preparing for his work. Lent is meant to focus on Christians' minds on God, but it also helps them to think of others who are not as fortunate as they are. As part of Lent, Christians often give up something for 40 days, just like Jesus went without food in the desert. For example, people might give up chocolate, watching TV, and so on. In recent years, there has been a move towards starting something positive during Lent, instead of giving something up. Examples would be tidying your room, saying something encouraging to someone every day. 
making your bed, or doing your schoolwork without complaining. So we want you to see if you can come up with any ideas, positive things that you could do during these 40 days of Lent. Either giving something up or starting something new. You decide. Experts tell us if we do something for 40 days, it will become a habit that we do without thinking about it. Wouldn't it be good if after Lent, we carried on doing that same something good for the rest of the year. We're going to say a prayer. If you want to make it your prayer, join in the Amen at the end. Dear Lord, thank you that during special seasons in life, there are times to stop and think. Help us to find time to be peaceful and silent. Thank you for times such as Lent that remind us to think about you and consider what we can do to help others. Please help us always to be prepared to help other people. Amen. Have a good day. We'll see you next time for Assembly. <laughs>